Hey guys, Silhouette here with a new video, this time on steps you should generally always be taking when preparing for bosses. I've noticed a lot of players who have been experiencing a great difficulty with some of our limited urgent quest bosses, like the solo profound darkness fight in Baron Blossom, Corrupter of All, or our heavenly adversary Deus Esca Separat in Deus Esca, Maker of Epochs. Because of that, I wanted to go over some of the preparations you can do to get yourself more ready than ever before if you've been having issues with either of these bosses, or any other boss out there in PSO2. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, let's start off small. The least you can do before a boss fight is grab your choice of drink in the camp ship. I know this is probably the least advanced thing I could probably point out, but it is pretty important nonetheless. You probably noticed many other players run over to this little terminal on the wall in the camp ship prior to a mission. These drinks can give you a number of great buffs. They can help you deal damage, take damage, use photon arts more, or even just give you a bigger buffer of HP to a tank attacks with, depending on the type of drink you choose. While I imagine most players, even the newer ones, are probably already aware of this, it bears repeating just for those who aren't. Frankly, this is something I recommend doing before every mission so that you're getting the most out of your performance. Usually, the shift a drink, or of the most expensive variety that you can afford, is the best option, in my opinion. A lot of PSO2 is based on dealing damage and not taking it. I know that's a great simplification of the game's mechanics, but I feel like it is true even so. A lot of times, dealing more damage means that you're taking less damage at the end of the day, often just because you're killing the boss faster and not having to weather at quite as many attacks. Next up, let's talk about Photonic Effects, otherwise known as your Alliance Tree buff. If you happen to be in an active alliance, getting your Alliance buff can really help turn the tides of battle in your favor. While this is most often used for either the Experience Up or Rare Drop Rate Up effects, if you're struggling with a particular boss, consider using either the Attack Up or Defense Up buffs. These photonic effects do still count down outside of missions, unlike most buffs, so you do have to be mindful of that, but they do last for around 2 hours, and should be fine so long as you continue to reapply them every now and then. These buffs are pretty significant, as they provide a 20% boost to your universal attack or defense at level 8, which can be a pretty significant buff. Even if your alliance has a lower level tree, it is still a good buff that is free for you to use and can help you tip the scales in your favor. Last but not least, we have food related buffs. These are a bit more obscure, and not many players seem to know about them, but they also require you to already have a decent amount of gathering resources accumulated. But nevertheless, they can help you in a pinch with their flat increase to your stats. Keep in mind, that you can only ever have one food buff applied at a time. Using another one after the first will make the former buff expire with a notification indicating that this has happened. There are four recipes at this time in episode 4 that are currently available from the culinarian Ida in the Franca's Cafe that have a direct impact on either your stats or drops comparable to other buffs like your alliance buff. These four items are jerky, stir fry, marinade, and deep fried chicken. Jerky is the easiest to create, as it only requires red meat, which is obscenely common and drops from most expeditions. It raises your hit points by 50 and your photon points by 5 for 30 minutes. The next one is stir fry, which requires red meat, coast olives, and ruins grapes. It raises your damage stats including melee, ranged, and technique, by 100, and your hit points by 50 for 30 minutes. Next is marinade, which requires red meat, coast olives, and forest rice. It raises your defense stats, melee, ranged, and technique, by 100, and your photon points by 5 for 30 minutes. The last one, deep fried chicken, doesn't increase any stats like the first three do but it does raise your rare drop rate by 10% for 5 minutes. It requires marbled meat, Tokyo soybeans, and Las Vegas lettuce. The short duration of this item means that if you intend to use it, you ideally should do so in the boss's final phase, which will likely mean you need to place this on your sub palette in order to be effective with it. Of these four, 
I personally recommend using either stir fry or marinade if you have the resources available to make them in a relatively large quantity. Stir fry is a great damage boosting meal that along with the previous buffs can see your damage reaching new heights, even if you're max level and are rocking a pretty solid build with good augments. Marinade is the same, it just applies to defense. As we mentioned earlier, I'm personally of the opinion that while I do like defense, attack is more important. If you can't afford either of these, you can more than likely still afford to make jerky given its extremely common requirement material. Deep fried chicken's low duration makes it more difficult to apply effectively and almost certainly requires a spot on your sub palette and for you to consume it five minutes prior to the boss's defeat. This won't help you survive, but 10% is a decent increase for hunting elusive rare drops so it definitely is something to keep in mind if you can make it work and it bears mentioning at the very least. Again, this isn't strictly necessary, none of these buffs are, but if you're having trouble, it is a buff that is available to you and it can make the difference, so it's always worthwhile to have one of these buffs when possible. And that's it guys, if you're using all of these buffs for preparing for a boss alongside the usual Shifta and D-Band buffs you get from your party members or from yourself, you should be at the absolute peak of attack and defense preparation, and with any luck, should be generally as capable as you ever will be to take on bosses in PSO2. I initially wanted to mention Shifta Essence and D-Band Essence from the item shops, but when I looked into them, I honestly thought they were less useful than just having a party member buff you with their Shifta and D-Band techniques. And frankly, on their own, they're not that impressive. While there are some cases where they would be helpful, they aren't that common, and I wanted to focus on the more distinct measures you could take to give yourself that extra bit of an edge when preparing for bosses. While this video is a bit more of a general preparation one, I do plan to have more videos out soon regarding individual boss strategies, in particular Deus Esca and the Profound Darkness solo fight. I want to give a big shout out to several users over at the PSO2 Reddit who looked over my last video and gave me quite a bit of helpful advice on making these videos, and are also the reason I'm trying to keep this one just a tiny bit shorter than the last one, unless you guys want another 30 minute video. Even if I doubt my ability to make a 30 minute video uh, based on buffs alone, you know, that would be crazy. Thanks to Sonic Sonic 3, Chojeda, I hope I'm saying that right, and Cloud City Fish for all your tips and advice, and thank you my fellow ARCs for tuning in. Please consider leaving a like if this video helps you or anyone else that you know, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing any more of my content. Both of these things help out me and my channel a great deal, and hopefully will help you out as well in the long run. Also consider checking me out on Twitch, I stream PSO2 content pretty often over there, and the next stream is up on Friday morning. I hope to see you there. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and may you have all the rare drops.